So a lot of you are very confident that you can solve this basic math problem without the aid of a calculator. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have 1 half plus 1 half divided by 1 half times 1 half minus 1 half. Matter of fact, a lot of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this problem is too easy. Well, you very well may be shocked that you could get this problem wrong. All right, so the only way to know whether in fact you know how to do a problem like this is to do it. And the only rule here is no calculator. All right, so if you wanna go ahead and try this problem and show off your basic math skills, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now I'm gonna give you one uh, real, uh, really um, important suggestion here. Matter of fact, it's not even a suggestion. Uh, it's kind of like a requirement and that is to show all your work, okay? Do this problem one step at a time because if you don't get this uh, right, you wanna know what step you didn't understand. Okay, so here we go, we have our problem. And in mathematics, these things right here are called mathematical operators. So addition, division, uh, multiplication, subtraction, and there's even others as well. And the whole key to doing this problem right assuming that you know how to uh, do basic fraction operations, is the order, right? So in other words, uh, some of you might be like, well, I'm gonna start right here. We have one half minus one half. Well, one half minus one half is zero. Now then we have one half times zero. Well, this is going to lead you in a bad direction in terms of this problem. Now, some of you might be like, well, I wanna start over here. One half plus one half. Well, that's wrong as well. So how do we know what order to take when we're doing a problem like this? Well, we need to follow this lovely acronym right here. And this is basically a checklist that goes from left to right. Okay, so obviously these letters stand for something. We have P-E-M-D-A-S. I'm gonna explain this right now. But before I do that, I'm going to give you a lovely mnemonic, a little memory aid here that you can remember PEMDAS by. And that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally uh, did, but we thank her for her lovely little phrase anyways. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Again, this is a checklist. It goes from left to right. So the P stands for parentheses. So in your math problem, if you see parentheses or brackets, uh, basically these are what we call grouping symbols, things that group numbers together. If you have any of these, this is where we have to start. And you can clearly see in our problem, we have no parentheses. But uh, we, again, we have to follow this checklist from left to right. Okay, E stands for exponents, but you basically you can think of these as powers. So if you have two to the third power, this little number up here in the top right is called the exponent. This bottom number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So E really stands for exponents, but it means powers. Now in our problem, we have no power, so we can continue to move forward from left to right. Now here is where most people get very confused about the order of operations. Okay, so it makes sense that, uh, matter of fact, let me just tell you what the rest of these letters stand for. So M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, S stands for subtraction. So if we're, uh, you know, if this is a checklist that's going from left to right, a lot of people think, well, the next thing on the list is M, so we have to do multiplication first, i.e. this would be our first thing to do in this problem. But this is wrong. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, ah, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? This is why I don't like math. You just told me one thing, now you're telling me another thing. Well, this is a very kind of confused uh, part of the order of operations. Sometimes I don't think math books fully stress this enough, but let's go ahead and talk about how to approach this. Okay, so the next step is multiplication or division. Multiplication or division. Okay, and you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. So if you have multiplication, then division from left to right, you're going to do that. But if you have division and then multiplication, you're going to do this. Okay. Now you can kind of see in our problem what we are probably going to do first. 
All right, so addition and subtraction is what we're going to do after all, multiplication and division, and it works the same way, whatever we see first, from left to right. Okay, so a quick review on the order of operations. Now let's apply this knowledge to do this problem. Okay, so here is our problem, and we want to be thinking about this PEMDAS the entire time, right? Now, you don't have to write this down. Well, you can write this down if you want, but uh, hopefully you just, you know, have this acronym in your head, and you want to be, you know, thinking about this every single step that you take. So the first step is, all right, do we have any parentheses? No. Do we have any powers, exponents? No. Do we have multiplication or division? Yes, indeed, we do. Now, uh, what comes first from left to right? The division comes first. So this is our first move. All right, now we have one half divided by one half. Now, even if you don't know how to divide fractions, what is anything divided by itself? Okay, if you have 10 and you divide it by 10, what is the answer? It's one. Now, 10 divided by 10, I could write this way too, right? 10 divided by 10, the answer is one. So what do you think one half is divided by, uh, one half divided by one half is equal to? Well, if you said one, you would be absolutely right. But uh, let's just go ahead and do a quick review of fractions. So one half divided by one half. So to do fraction division, what we need to do is change this from a division problem to a multiplication problem by flipping the fraction to the right of the division symbol. Okay, so we're going to uh, flip this upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So instead of 1 over 2, we're going to write this as 2 over 1. All right, so now we're going to multiply these fractions. And how do you multiply fractions? Very easy. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, but again, anything divided by itself is one, but that is just how, you know, uh, you do it if, in fact, you wanted to take the long road to get the answer. All right, so again, uh, we go back to our original problem, one-half plus one-half divided by one-half times one-half minus one-half. We're focused in on this being our first step, and we know the answer is one. So that's what we're going to write. We have one-half plus one times one-half minus one-half. So at this stage... Uh, we took this first step. We need to review our PEMDAS, right? So you're thinking to yourself, all right, uh, let's see here. Uh, again, we don't have any parentheses. We don't have any powers. Do we have multiplication division? Yes. Uh, what came first from left to right? Division did. Do we have any more division or multiplication? Yes, we have multiplication. So we're going to have to do this next before we uh, talk about addition or subtraction. Okay, so one half times uh, one. Well, then hopefully that's pretty straightforward. And so you can write this PEMDAS uh, thing down all the time or just keep, you know, cycling this uh, little acronym. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally in your head, but now we have to figure out what one times one half is. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. And hopefully for most of you, that's going to be pretty easy. It, uh, the answer, obviously, one times uh, anything is just that number. So this is going to be one half. All right, so let's go to take that step. And we have uh, one half plus one times one half minus one half. Uh, we're going to do this right here. I know I'm kind of breaking this down in like really, you know, specific steps, but I'm doing this to emphasize, you know, when you do math, you do want to do things in each uh, step like so, especially if you're a math student, because if you make an error right here, somebody can look at your work, but like, oh, right here, you don't understand this. This is what you need to correct. And once you understand this, everything else makes sense. Okay. So one times one half obviously is one half. All right. So we have one half plus one half minus one half at this point. The answer is uh, one half. Now, some of you might be saying, well, you can just, you know, take one half minus one half, that's zero. 
you know, you could think of the problem this way because I could take this negative and turn it into a plus negative, okay? The subtraction sign into a plus negative for those of you that know how to deal with positive and negative numbers. So this is all an addition problem. So one half plus uh, negative one half is zero. It leaves us with a one half. Or we can simply just take one half plus one half, which is what? Whoa, that's one, right? So we're just working from left to right. So whatever uh, addition and subtraction works like multiplication and division. So one half plus one half is one. One minus one half is one half. Okay, so a math problem with a lot of one halves. But uh, if you made a little error, you know, I'm glad that you did. Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? That's really mean of you uh, to say that you're happy that uh, I made a mistake. Well, I'm glad you made a mistake with me because if you made an error, hopefully you understood, you know, what that error was. And now you have the knowledge to correct that error. Okay, so if you're going to make a mistake, you know, mistakes are good, actually. Okay, learning, making mistakes is part of learning. Let me just say that. You should never feel bad about making a mistake. What you should feel bad about is not learning from your mistakes. Okay, and, uh, you can't really identify your mistakes unless you're nice, you know, right, nice and neat, structured and organized. Okay, so uh, either yourself or someone else can go ahead and detect, uh, you know, where you went right and wrong. Okay, so now let's go to take a look at one example of how easy it is to get this problem wrong. So somebody might be saying, all right, uh, I don't really have a lot of uh, time to do this problem. Uh, let me get this thing done so this guy leaves me alone. So I have one half plus one half divided by one half times one half minus one half. So uh, someone's eyes could just be drawn to these one halves. It's happy, you know, it's like reading from left to right, kind of like reading uh, sentences or, you know, a paragraph or something like that. So you're like, okay, one half plus one half. Let me do this real quick. One half plus one half, that's one, right? I know that. And then one half times one half, maybe, a, you know, somebody in their eyes kind of go here and then they got like one fourth. So it's like, okay, one divided by one fourth minus one half. Now, the, you know, those are two steps that make sense. They're logical. And so if you don't know how to organize or what steps to take, you know, doing, you know, the results of one half plus one half is one. One half times one half is one fourth minus one half. Seems like, you know, this is not a bad thing to do, but let's see where this takes us. Okay, so we have one divided by one fourth minus one half. All right, so maybe someone's like, all right, I know I have to do division before subtraction, or maybe something pops in their head, so they go one uh, divided by one fourth is equal to what? Well, we have to change this to multiplication, flip this upside down, so that's gonna be four over one, so one times four over one is four. All right, so all this right here is equal to four, so now we have four uh, uh, minus one half. Right, so four minus one half is three and one half. Okay, so someone could easily end up with all different sorts of uh, answers to a problem like this. So don't feel bad again. Okay, my videos are not designed to make anyone feel bad if you didn't get this problem uh, right. Matter of fact, you should celebrate. Be like, yay, I'm a D2 math man. I didn't get it right, so now I know, uh, you know, where I went wrong, and I'll never make that mistake again. Well, actually, if you want to master a math skill, you got to practice, practice, practice. So, you know, watching a video like this is the first step, but you got to follow through and do a ton of additional practice problems as well. Uh, if you really want to kind of, you know, embed it as a math skill that you'll have for the long run. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.